Hello everybody, Damascus the Fox here with another look at video. Uh, if you're somebody like me who buys your knives mostly on aesthetics or mechanisms, then this is the video for you. And today we are looking at the, well, I don't know the name. I've tried to find the name. I'll, I'll put it in the description or, you know, the title. I can't figure out the name of this knife, so I'm just going to call it Smith & Wesson Knife. There. Um, yeah, so we're looking at Smith & Wesson Knife. Uh, this guy, now, I, I want to first put a little thing, I just want to say. Me, I love knives. All types, except for clones. No. Um, but I like knives all types. Cheap, uh, novelty, um, gas station, expensive, premium, budget, all of them. I love them all, except for clones. Um, so... You know, if I like the look of it or design of it or whatever, I, I will buy it. And uh, I kind of like doing that. It, it lets me really see quality where I put my money. This is like a $9 knife, $10 knife, I think it was. 9 or $10, somewhere around there. So I kind of like to buy knives like this just so I can really get a sense for dollar for dollar. Why I, I, I buy a $100 knife? Why do I buy a $50 knife? Why I buy a $200 knife? It, it really gives you a sense of that. If you buy a cheap knife, you will really understand your higher price knives and why you spend that extra money on it. Why do you spend extra money on a cutting tool? There's so many cutting tools out there that you don't need to spend eight hundred four hundred dollars on but you know why you do because you know you're getting quality dollar for dollar that's why you spend a lot of money on knives you buy knives because you love them you want more expensive materials so that's why i like to buy cheap knives so i understand why do i put more money into higher knives and so that's why I like to just bring awareness around this. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're somebody who's like, well, I don't want to spend hundred dollars on a knife. I just want a basic cutting tool. That, and I don't care how long the edge uh, holds up. I don't care about the composition. I don't care. I don't. I don't care about all this stuff. I just want something that will cut. This will do it. This will cut something. Um, you know, I've been forgetting to do my uh, my cut tests on these. I, I've been meaning to do that, and I keep forgetting. This one's already been kind of used, but let's see. Uh, so I apologize for that. I'm going to try to remember to do my cut tests on these look at videos. It kind of give you a sense of factory edge before I actually use them and then put my own edge on them because, you know, that's not giving you proper information. I want you to know factory edge. So this is factory edge. Eh, pretty good. It felt kind of weird. Let's try that again. I'm not getting the sweet spot. It's pretty sharp. It's decently sharp. Might be my fault. Maybe because this thing ripped this off. Let's see if we can get a proper angle on it. It cuts, then it just kind of like stops. There you go, right there I actually cut a little bit better. So I think it's kind of just point for point. It doesn't feel like it's the sharpest thing in the world. Um, oh, it's already three minute mark. This is going to be kind of a long video, isn't it? Yeah, it, it'll cut. It'll do what you need. If you need to open up a box or whatever, it, it's going to cut. It's going to cut a box. So, uh, steel on this guy, if you were wondering. I couldn't tell you. Stainless steel. Do with that what you will. That's what it is. Stainless steel. Uh, I'm not sure if this is any kind of coating. It might just be black paint. Kind of looks like black paint. And this is a, what they call, high-strength polymer. It's actually not that bad. Polymer is usually pretty cheap, but at least it's back, backed up. Well, you know, polymer is usually not the strongest thing in the world, but it's okay. I have no problem with polymer. Um, it, but luckily, it's backed up by steel liners, which are not cut out. So, yeah, it's a whole liner right there. It is only tip-down carry, and it's not reversible. So you have to carry it like this in your pocket. And luckily it is deep carry. It's pretty deep. Okay. That's all that's going to be sticking out. Uh, you do have to really like whip it out. The action on this guy. You can't just, you know, push it out with your thumb. 
You can, but it requires a little bit of a jolt. A uh, little, sometimes maybe wrist, maybe not. So, yeah, it's a little bit sluggish. It feels sluggish. Does not really have, you know, drop down action. Yeah. Uh, it has a little bit, little bit of lock stick. You can feel it pop when you disengage it, so I'm not sure. Yeah. So just a tad bit. It was pretty bad out of the box, but it loosens up over time. You know, as you use it, they loosen up. So don't worry about lock stick. Just use it until you have to jimmy it out with a tool. Then that's problematic. Sometimes a little bit more than others. Uh, it's got a lanyard hole, so that's something. So, the yeah, ergonomics on it is actually pretty comfortable. Fits the hand perfectly, and it comes up to these nice little, yeah, it has that nice little choil right here, and a little on the uh, butt, so it has an upswept. So it kind of locks in your hand, so it ain't going to go forward or back. So, yeah, no jumping on the top, on its thumb ramp. No jumping anywhere, except for the line of lock. Which is actually not too bad, actually. You get to it pretty easily because it protrudes a little bit. And it has all this nice little texturing so you can actually feel it pretty good and not too painful. So, that's pretty cool. Alright, well, I think this video has gone on long enough. So, Smith & Wesson, knife. So, uh, stand up right there, perfect. Alright, well, I hope you liked this video. And if you like more knife-related content, remember to subscribe because I post videos every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And there'll be more knives and more videos in the future. Thank you again for watching and have a fantastic day. Bye.